Okay, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, we're just about at the end of Sgt. Pepper's, the great, great record. And uh, we've got three more songs, Good Morning, Good Morning, the reprise to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, which, by the way, you know, even though it's a reprise, they tweak the hell out of it. it they've, they've done all sorts of different things to it. No, it um, isn't just uh, take that version and play yeah, it at the end. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they had the elements of the melody and chord change, oh, okay. don't get me wrong, yeah. but they, they tweaked like crazy inside of this. And then finally we have the immortal, really, like, it's this is Lennon's Beethoven's Fifth, uh, A Day in a Life. Ah. And one thing you have to hand to Lennon is that um, he really came through in a pinch. If all of his songs on this record were to be considered trite, this made up for them. Okay. You know? uh, frankly, I don't think they're trite because th it's still art. It's still, there's just still so much creativity that went into it. Yeah, that they were futzing around with, uh, with studio effects and stuff like this. That was, you know, when I teach, I say there's a triangle of excellence in artistry and particularly musicianship. And the triangle on one hand is the, the um, music theory, which allows you the navigation through a piece of music, whether you're analyzing someone's music or you're creating your own music, okay. and also playing, uh, learning to improvise through chord changes. The other side is coordination, just the physical ability to do anything on an instrument, be it strumming, forming a chord, playing a scale. That's just physical ability, like learning to balance on a bicycle. And at the top of the triangle, which I consider the most important, is expression. Because at the bottom line, you want to hit somebody where it counts. You, you really want to hit them in the heart. That's my feeling on the subject. There are people who uh, I feel overly intellectualize music and take it, uh, take it way too far. Uh, an example of way too far would be uh, the composer Milton Babbitt, who was a 60s avant-garde composer. And what he did was he entered mathematical formulae into his computer and then had the computer spit out notes, like he gave values to each notes. And he gave values to accents, like how loud or soft the note is. And he gave values to the actual pitch of the note and the duration of the note. And he applied mathematical formulas to this, and the computer would spit out a piece of music. And, you know, to me, that is taking the theory of music so far beyond, it, yeah. it's absurd. It's like, yeah, you could call it an art piece, fine, but... Cold hard science. Yeah, <laughs> at that point, I think it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and while we're on the subject, I mean, we're, we're going to good morning, good morning. This is reminis reminiscent of Igor Stravinsky, yeah. all right? I once saw, um, uh, we were talking about the Harvard lectures, the Leonard Bernstein Harvard right. lectures. And Stravinsky, you know, did a similar thing uh, as far as the manipulation of music, which, again, I have a hard time with. I, I don't like the idea of intellectually manipulating music. Music is a heart phenomenon. It's an emotional thing. It speaks a very mysterious language. And um, I, I don't know, respect should be paid to that, you know. And any, that's my feeling. I'm, I'm a bit conservative when it comes to music. It should be tonal. It should, it should reach the heart. You okay. know? But there's a fourth element that doesn't get looked at, all right, uh, to that triangle. So now it's a square. Because there's a, the other element in music would be, well, actually, a, actually that's wrong. Let, let's talk about the three basic elements of music, rhythm, melody, and harmony. Right? You'd say that wraps it up, right? but it doesn't. There's a fourth element there, and that fourth element would be texture. Okay. Right? An example of that would be Ravel's Bolero. The, you have the melody, it repeats the same thing every time. The only difference it makes is the melody's first stated in, in a lower octave, and then every time it repeats, it goes to a higher octave. Uh, the chord changes remain the same throughout. The rhythm remains the same throughout, pretty much. Right. But what he's working with is the colors, the textures of the orchestra itself. You know, what would it sound like to, 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 to take a bassoon and have it play in this register? Oh, okay. You know, oh, we can use the celeste. We, you know, how many orchestras use the celeste? You know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about texture here, and that's really what Peppers was mostly about, was the, the, the feel of the, of, of the sound, you know, the texture of the sound. So that was an artistic venture in a different point of music. But then... Actually, I have so much to say about this. You know, when we talked, when we mentioned last time about this particular song, um, Good Morning, Good Morning, there is no Beatles song that has this uh, complex. A uh, rhythmic structure? Rhythmic it? structure, mm -hmm. yeah. 
And here's the amazing thing to me, is Lennon does it once, just once. Uh, me, I know as a composer and songwriter, I'll get like on a, on a thematic mindset where like if I'm experimenting, let's say odd time signatures, which I don't anymore, but if I, if I um, do that, I'll write like 15 pieces. Uh -huh. And each, will, I will think, will have its own artistic merit and standing. But when, you know, the thing about the Beatles was they do something just once and they uh. would not get addicted to it. Uh. All right, like, for example, uh, just to give you an example, like, um, Revolver was the first, like, transparent record, all right? Transparent meaning, you know, like, uh, you've seen TV shows, like, where, you know, there's a stage and you have your host and, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, what do you call talk shows, right? right? But then so the camera pans all the way back so you could see the stage and the audience and the cameras and, and all the oh, scaffolding sure. and all like this to get you an inside view of this is really what's going on. This is TV. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not trying to create an illusion here. Or we're trying to expose the illusion for a moment, you know. With the Beatles, you know, Harrison starts out um, uh, Taxman with one, two, three, four, right? All right, granted, like in the earlier days of rock and roll, it was one, two, three, four, right. but still, you can hear it's like guitars fiddling in the background. It was like the sense of, oh, we're in the studio here, everything's loose, you right. know. So, uh, you know, we have that kind of transparency. That was done once. I mean, they, you know, they did that one time. Uh, over and over again, you could, you could see this kind of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, all right, Eleanor Rigby, all right, twice maybe they used a full string quartet. Once was in Yesterday. Eleanor Rigby, but they did not get addicted to this. Now you take a band like ELO, Electric Light Orchestra, mm -hmm. they incorporate a cello into every friggin' thing. Oh, right. Okay? Right. This is what I'm talking about. The Beatles would say, here's an idea. Yeah. You know, uh, I am the walrus, okay? John Lennon throws out these strings of major chords. <laughs> moving in whole tone steps. He never did anything like that again. Huh. Right? Well, this, uh, you know, uh, we're in the perfect town for this sort of stuff because it's, it is one of those things of uh, when you've got something that works, just beat it to death. Right, exactly. And it's uh, with uh, gig, that's uh, actor typecasting. Oh, we need this kind of, you know, angry, yeah. short, stubby, bald-headed guy. Right. And uh, that's what that guy does. Right, right. You know. And, and it, yeah. musically, the same thing. A band uh, will find, you know, something, well, we had a huge hit with that, so let's make an album like that. Steely okay. Dan, as, as brilliant as they were as writers, you know, they, they decided to venture into a more jazz-like category. Well, when you listen to Asia, it's not like every song sounds the same, mm -hmm. but obviously and clearly they took the same approach in every song. We've right. got a jazz sound. The Beatles, you know, I mean, it's a little naive to say, but the song I Want You on Abbey Road was considered jazzy. And, you, uh -huh. know, uh, you know, obviously it's not, but still it was their way of saying, okay, we're going to touch on this for a moment now. And then they touch on it and leave it. Huh. You know, which uh, to me expresses their creative restlessness and their desire you know that they, they would never settle for something they would never yeah. settle for anything you know it, it was always like what's new what's new what's we're, new we're rolling on to good morning good morning okay and i am not going to play the guitar for this because frankly i'd have to study it believe it or not it's like um sure but i will i will go over the chord structure so um um starts off with the, well, we'll get to that. Um, we're in the key of A, and it goes to the one chord to the four chord. That would be A to D. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, ga. All right, and by the, just decided to stick ga at the end of it. All okay. Right? Um, now, the chord structure here is mixolydian for some part of it, and just straight major for another part of it. It goes A to E minor to G6. And it gives a very airy feeling. Then it goes to D. Nothing to do, it's up to you. Nothing to say, but it's okay. We're back to that again. So it's like an A, A, B, A structure. We have the, the A, E minor, G6. Then he has D, E, and then we go back to finish off the phrase with A minor, G, A, E minor, G6 again. Okay. G6 is a G chord without the third finger. Okay. Right. Classic Beatles sound. That they used to end songs with six. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and the good morning, good morning, good morning is just A to D. This is all the song is. There's some sax licks. 
We're just broken up arpeggios from A to D, the three notes of the A chord, broken notes of uh, uh, the D chord. Okay. All right. And that's basically it. The rest is all texture, color, and, and having lots of fun, you know. All right. So what I'm going to do is I have here this handy-dandy chart that I put together. Okay. And for non-musicians, um, we see time signatures here. Really, the, no the, the number to pay mind to is the up upper number. Right. This tells you how many beats there are per measure. Right. All right. A measure of music is just the cycle of the meter. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Any one of those blocks of four would be considered a measure. But sometimes you could have three, and sometimes you could have odd numbers like five. Right. Right, which we talked about with uh, Dave Brubeck, which is called Time Out, by the way. I researched that. Went it to is. Wikipedia. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if you look at this real quick, like most music goes one, two, three, four, and continues along with the cycle. If it's a waltz, one, two, three, one, two, three. If it's 12, eight, one, two, three, 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 like that. Right. But here we're moving, we start out in four, four, and by the way, also it has to be considered, well, let me roll back a little bit. Music is, uh, generally music is, um, uh, the, the rhythms and structures of music are usually based on twos, threes, or fours, okay? Okay. So not just the, the each beat of a measure we're talking about, like four, four beats in a measure or three beats in a measure or whatever, but also how many measures. In other words, very, our, our ears are very adjusted to four-bar uh, phrases or eight-bar phrases, okay? And music is structured very much along these ways, four, eight. Even if you have three-four time, you still have four bars of three-four. Okay. All right? And... Uh, even a song like Take 5, we have a 5-4, but we still have, like, evenly 2, 4, 8, or 16 bar lengths. Okay. Okay. What happens in this one is, in this particular song, is not only, there are three things going on rhythmically here. Uh, first of all, like on the intro, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 bars, but notice I put a double line here. Right. Okay. That's because this is a pickup. We hear the sax enter here. But then the vocals start here, so really the sense is it's starting here, but it's only three bar length. Right. So that gives us a sense of odd. Secondly, what's going on is I put a few accent points on here. Uh, they're accenting the drums when it hits the cymbal crash on an odd beat of the measure, the third beat of the measure. Right. And it's also changed to three, four, so it feels really strange. Okay. So that's the second element is accents in bizarre places. So going from four, four to two, three, four. It's right. It's that quick. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to run through it. Okay. I'm going to, we're going to actually play the music, and I'm okay. going to lead us through this whole thing. All righty. All right, so um, the second thing is accents. The first thing is odd amounts of bars. The second thing is accents in weird places, and the third thing is the ever-changing time signatures. Okay. So we have three um, rhythmic elements in the architecture that being screwed with, all right? I'm sure LSD had a lot to do with this, <laughs> all right? And when we get down here, I'm going to explain swing, because also, well, there's a fourth element, actually, the switch between what are called straight eighth notes and swing eighth notes, and I may as well demonstrate that. Okay. Straight eighth notes have a very hard edge. It's like if you were to picture a waveform, it would be a square wave, all right? So, uh, one and two and three and four and, these are eighth notes, one and two and three and four and, these are straight eighth notes. Like in rock and roll. Okay. One, two, three, four, one, two, right? One and two and three and four. Very straight. To make those swing, what you do is, here's the amount of time between beats, all right? All right? An eighth note splits that time exactly, precisely in half. But what they do in swing is, instead of the eighth note cutting it exactly in half, it extends. So one of the notes is longer and one of the notes is smaller. So instead of dot 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 dot, you get dot 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 dot. This is called swing. You know. Okay. Now this is a swing rhythm. You may not hear the dot 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 dot, but it's it's in there in the background. Dot 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 dot. Right. It's in there. Now what happens in this? The fourth element is that they move to a 12-8 time signature, which which creates swing. Now, jazz musicians will say that you cannot write down swing eighth notes, all right? They're kind of a cross between a triplet with, uh, let's say, uh, 
What am I thinking of? Uh, 16th note triplets? No, 8th note triplets, okay? Each beat would have three uh, beats within it. Right. Except the first beat is tied to the second beat, so it has double the length. So it's da, da, right? So it's, it's like uh, eighth note triplets where the first two eighth notes are actually a quarter note and then an eighth note, quarter, eighth, quarter, eighth, quarter, eighth, okay? okay? Um, it's also, it also can be called like a dotted sixteenth note, which would be, you know, um, a dotted eighth, uh, uh, I'm sorry, dotted eighth sixteenth is what it's called. Dotted eighth sixteenth, where you get sixteenth note, da, 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 right? Okay. But the first three beats, da, right, they're all tied together as the value of an eighth note plus half. So it's da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Similar sound. But there's a difference. One is harder edge. Uh, uh, and triplets more like. Okay. It's a slightly rounder. And the jazz guys always say it's somewhere in between those two and you couldn't write it down. Yeah, all right, but you know that's jazz's insecurity. No. It's like intellectual insecurity, like we have to be the ones that hold the esoteric secrets. Oh. That's the jazz attitude. It's it's just so much bullshit. Yeah. It really is. It's got nothing to do with reality. Uh. But, you know, it's insecurity. <coughs> it's intellectual insecurity. The two go hand in hand sometimes. Yeah. You know, musicians get treated like basically the scum of the earth. So, they have to kind of maintain their own sense of uh I, I have value, so they have this intellectual bulwark, because it really is hard to understand music theory, but they love to make it even more <laughs> esoteric, you know, <laughs> yeah, like you'll yeah. never get, this is like yeah. quantum physics, you, you won't know? get into the club, you know, and this is why I've streamlined music theory for songwriters, where it is understandable, sorry, it no. is, it is reachable, all right, Appreciate so, it. what I'd like to do is play the song, and I'm going to point out the rhythmic, the rhythms, we're going to follow the bouncing pencil, okay, okay, uh, I'm so. going to tell the viewer to bear with me here. I'm hand-holding, and uh, we'll try and keep everything in here. Yeah, yeah, okay. If you screw it up, man, forget it. This I is know it. it. Okay. I know it. This is like, you know, Orson Welles depending on some idiot. All right. Here we go. Good morning, good morning. Rooster. Three, four. One, two, four. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three, and one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, accent. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, accent. One. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. Let's hold there because really the rest of the song just follows that. Okay. Now that was insane. Yeah. Uh, did you, did you, know, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I sat down this morning like writing all this stuff down going, oh my God, I didn't know it was, I, I knew there were some changes, but geez Louise. Yeah. And not only that, but like, all right, when we go from to I've got nothing to say, but it's okay. Good morning. Right. Good morning. Good. Now, so we come back to a verse. Here. This should right. be the mirror image of this part. Right. I mean, that's what songwriters do. This is an A section, a B section, you should come back to A. Well, this is an A, all right, but he's he's tweaked it again. Because we go from, just like above, let's see, we go 3-4, uh, 4-4, three, 3-4, four, right. four, four, three, three, four, four, right. three, four. and by the way, if it's not marked, you just carry over from the bar before. Okay. So this is also 3-4. Then... Here we get five four where there was four four, all right. Right. It's it's displaced. The five four came here in the other one, and now we're going into twelve eight and four four. 